the eight year old male child this child uh, presented to emergency services with hematemesis for one day along with fresh blood in this for one day and the child presented with low blood pressure and uh, poor peripheral pulses had necessitated with fluids and blood there is no past history and abdominal examination at the time of presentation was normal it means there was no hepatosplenomegaly so now with this presentation uh, first of all what is the likely site of bleeding in this child child has hematemesis as well as fresh blood that is hematochezia so you can just say upper gi or lower gi if not specific <laughs> mass upper gi bleed upper gi upper gi upper gi upper gi massive bleed upper gi massive lower gi kyun nahi hai you are having fresh blood along with stools why not uh, lower gi upper gi but everybody is on upper gi dheera sir over to you so uh, i think they are uh, very intelligent uh, group of people we are having so this is upper gi bleeding upper gi bleeding we say when the bleeding is proximal to the ligament of treads and uh, lower gi is uh, when distal to ligament of treads so the upper gi bleeding will manifest with hematemesis and uh, also with melina so when the blood is not uh, vomited out it uh, pass passes down into the intestine intestinal bacteria uh, oxidize the hemoglobin convert it into hematin that gives rise to the dark uh, black tarry color of the stool so that is melina so in upper gi bleeding what we have is hematemesis and melina but when the bleed is very massive as is apparent in this child the presence with hypotension and shock so what happens is the transit of this blood is very fast and there is hardly any time for intestinal bacteria to oxidize this blood and then there is apparent uh, passage of fresh blood so this is not lower gi bleeding because lower gi bleeding with lever result in hematemesis but upper gi bleeding if massive can result in hematochezia that is why it is upper gi bleeding now uh, coming to uh, further uh, question the, what is the likely cause of such uh, bleeding you have no clue in this child towards the cause there is no past history the abdominal examination is normal he just presented with massive vomiting without any trigger without any other factor so they will go with the most common cause so please type in your chat box uh vascular ectasia varices variceal bleed most common cause variceal bleeding gastritis gastric ulcer varices varied answer but most answers are in favor of esophageal varices dheeraj sir yes i would say that variceal bleeding the uh, child presents with massive upper gi bleeding the diagnosis is always very shield bleed unless proved otherwise so this child is having uh, massive uh, very shield bleeding now uh, what uh, that we can say without even uh, uh, what about the somebody said gastritis and uh, gastric ulcer how can they be ruled out do they also have such a massive bleed uh, gastric ulcer and uh, peptic ulcers they are unlikely to cause massive bleeding in this way without any previous symptoms they would always uh, present with pain abdomen and uh, other features before having massive bleed uh, and uh, the bleed is also not very massive uh, in children with uh, peptic ulcer disease so they would uh, present with only occasionally blood tinged uh, vomitus or uh, that will not result in hemodynamic compromise later as i said uh, rarely it could be possible unless proved otherwise in a stable child well child who was well before uh, presentation uh, you should suspect very simply uh, dr dheeraj you said esophageal varices okay agree but the most common cause would be portal hypertension and there is no spleen how will we explain that oh that is important because in all cases of portal hypertension you should have splenomegaly can anybody tell me why uh, spleen may not be there even despite portal hypertension in this child GI bleed can decompress after acute bleed spleen size decreases acute presentation pre sinusoidal after acute bleed so uh, yes uh, they are right that at the time of massive bleeding because the bleeding is massive the spleen uh, decongests the all the blood which is present in sinusoids which uh, led to enlargement of 
spleen is lost and you may not have any apparent splenomegaly at the time of massive bleeding but when you resuscitate this child with fluids with blood you see that the spleen appears so uh, even uh, with, with the absence of splenomegaly the diagnosis would be portal hypertension leading to uh, very severely okay so the next question now we comes to whether this is a hepatic or extra hepatic uh, uh, portal hypertension so with this kind of presentation uh, what uh, the participants like to comment whether you are dealing with a hepatic uh, etiology of portal hypertension in this child or hepatic that is pre hepatic or hepatic portal venous obstruction i think all answers coming in so far are extra are in favor of extra hepatic portal hypertension okay. so again uh, like i said for neonatal hepatitis and ehba there is nothing sure shot but there would be clinical pointers which would suggest ehpvo so if there is no growth failure ehpvo growth failure hepatic no jaundice ehpvo jaundice hepatic if there is irregular enlargement of liver or hepatomegaly it is hepatic if there is normal or small liver uh, it is again uh, extra hepatic if there is massive ascites hepatic no ascites or mild ascites extra hepatic deranged liver function test hepatic normal liver function test extra hepatic if uh, on the ultrasonography the portal venous flow you can examine to comment whether it is extra hepatic or hepatic depending on the flow but yes uh, there is nothing sure shot you can have hepatic cause even despite everything being normal so the final diagnosis is by liver biopsy if the liver biopsy reveals changes suggestive of hepatic uh, changes in fibrosis or cirrhosis then the diagnosis becomes uh, hepatic if there are no changes in the liver biopsy then only you can say that you are dealing with extra hepatic portal venous obstruction 